morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord. Yeah, praise the Lord, right? Praise God. That's something to be happy about. I, on Wednesday, I talked about a little bit um, this past Wednesday about God being a happy God. And, you know, I, I just, uh, like how you perceive God is how you'll be able to kind of, um, you know, paint that picture of God to the people around you. And I, I see God as a happy God. I really do. He's not the great, like, judge up there with a gavel in his hand waiting for me to mess up and smash me. But when I do, he's certain to take the, you know, he, he definitely uh, has his way of correcting me. And I'm quite sure he does that for you as well. And I'm I'm thankful for that. And uh, today, a lot of people are missing. Um, uh, as I prepared for this Sunday, um, I did not have the foreknowledge or any insight that people would not be here today. Um, grateful for uh, video. Uh, I know a lot of our people that normally here are uh, in, with other commitments today, and some are not feeling well. Please pray for uh, Brother John. He's not feeling well this morning was up all night with a rotator issue in his shoulder and some other stuff going on. So pray for our dear brother John. And, um, and then some others were just, uh, uh, this particular Sunday just happened to be where things were, were um, taking place in uh, different areas of their life. And, but uh, many of them called me, and because I think people are getting to know me now, that I would probably worry if, I, if they didn't call me. So I'm grateful for the phone call. Uh, that I, I know that um, you're not just playing hooky from church because for some reason the Patriots started at 11 o'clock or something. But you know, we know that's not the case. And, uh, and, but I'm grateful for those of you that are here this morning. And I, I didn't really have a sermon per se to share with you this morning. I do have a lot to say. But it was more of a family talk that I just wanted to be... Uh, kind of a father figure to some, brother to some, but pastor to all, and have a family talk with our church this morning. Is that okay with you? This 21 days um, has really been an absolute blessing. It really has. Many of you that, because of work reasons or other commitments, family uh, busyness, uh, could not come um, from 6 to 7 every night. Some did. Um, some made it every night, some as often as you could. No, definitely no judgment to anybody. And I think, and I do know that our church has been praying extraordinarily so uh, over this past 21 days, whether you came here for that segment of time or not. Many people were letting me know that they were, uh, they were praying during that time at home and or taking an extra hour of their life that week or that week before that week and praying and seeking God and following the, um, the 21 day prayer manual that I put out at the beginning of this. Um, today, we are praying for Pembroke Assembly of God. Amen. 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 And, uh, you know, it's something about our church that I think that the majority of the time that we were here during this last uh, 21 days, the, I would say the extraordinary uh, majority of the time was praying for other people other than ourselves. Isn't that fantastic? Other issues other than ourselves. And that's giving one's life away uh, for your brothers and for your sisters. And uh, I, let me put this uh, weapon that I have in my hand away. I want to applaud you. I do. I want to applaud you. Uh, it is a joy, a great joy of mine to be connected to you and be, be your pastor. I have never, I have, I have done 21-day uh, prayer times before um, and never have seen or sensed the turnout that we have had this past three weeks uh, plus. And just the phone calls, the emails, the, um, the texts that were coming to me, the people praying, were extraordinary. Extraordinary, extraordinary. You know, there's something called the uh, 2080 rule um, in Christian circles, where that 2080 rule by, you know, Barna and different church, they study church growth, study church development. Uh, there's different uh, associations out there that, for whatever reason, they felt like that's their calling to study church 
history and growth and to um, kind of dissect patterns and, and whatnot. But uh, the 2080 rule is that 20 people, 20% 20 of the people <clears throat> participate and in, in a nutshell, 80% spectate. Make sense? Uh, so 20% of the people participate in the activities of the church um, from top to bottom and 80%. That's, that's across the board in America. We are against that norm by a long way. A long way. We are almost 80-20. 80-20. 80% participate and 20% spectate and really spectators to me I hate to say that because I don't want to offend anybody but even the spectators are participating amen I, and I think that is that is fantastic that's uh, that's incredible incredible and and so the likes of which I've I have not been part of before and I'm so so very thankful for that our Wednesday nights have been uh, incredible we started two weeks ago started a Thursday morning Connection, connect group with some folks that can't come out um, on, during Wednesday night, both weeks on Thursday. We had a good number of people here at that 10 o'clock uh, service on Thursday, and it, they've been fantastic. God has been pouring out His Spirit. He's stirring us up. That midweek connect is important. If you can't make it out for the 7 o'clock midweek connect on Wednesday night, please try to be here at um, 10 o'clock in the morning on Thursday. Uh, we do kind of a repeat of that service. Okay? All right. So, uh, but I, I wanted to applaud you and say thank you for your support during this 21 days of prayer and fasting. Tonight, we will wrap up with a 5 o'clock, uh, one hour, thereabouts, uh, as the Spirit leads. But from 5 to 6 o'clock, we will have experience night and have communion set up in the back of the church for you and your family to receive communion if that's something that you choose to do and also a time of worship with Ian and Beth and I know Nola Jean mentioned that to you already but I'm excited about that and I really feel like it's going to be a great kiss from heaven uh, from from the Lord uh, upon us so if you can make it out tonight at five o'clock please make every effort to do so the scripture that I wanted to share with you this morning is a simple simple scripture uh, in Psalm 133, and um, hey, this is the second time I'm using this little tool. I'm getting better at it. Yeah. <laughs> so the first time went off pretty well, I thought, so I tried again. So like maybe every couple weeks or so, I will have another PowerPoint as the Spirit leads. But this scripture reads, um, Psalm 133, and I'm going to have all the scripture, should be in the New King James this morning. Behold how good and pleasant how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. So you can dwell, but not be together. You can dwell together and not be in unity. But it's good, God's saying in Psalm 133, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren uh, to dwell together in unity. So it's much more than just dwelling, much more than dwelling together, but then dwelling together in unity. And this is how he says it will be. He said, this is how it is when brethren dwell together in unity. <clears throat> it is like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron. Running down on the edge of his garments, it's like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing life evermore. So in this dwelling together in unity, and I just wanted to talk about us. If I were to give the uh, title to my, this morning's message, this family talk, I just wanted to give it a title, us. Us. And because I believe and I know, according to Scripture, there is power in us. Uh, not a one-man show, not me, myself, and I, not me doing everything by myself, not you doing everything by yourself. The We, us, together, dwelling in unity. God says, the last part of verse 3 of Psalm 133 says, for there, where? I'm glad you asked. When brethren dwell together in unity. 
For there the Lord commands the blessing. It's a commanded blessing. When we dwell together in unity, it is a commanded blessing. Now, I don't know about you, but in my life, I want God's blessing to be commanded in my life. Commanded blessing, that blessing that can't be stopped. It's a command. Bethany is command, a command of God. I'm going to bless you. Why? Because you dwelt together in unity with your brothers and sisters in Christ. There's power in us. There's so much power in us. Let's look at this scripture in Joshua 24 and 15. And I just really want to focus in on the tail end of this verse. But let's read the whole thing. No one's in a hurry in here, are they? Amen. I'm glad. Uh, and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Make a choice. Choose for yourself. Today, this day, whom you're going to serve, whether the gods which your fathers served and were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in, which, in, in whose land you dwell. Are you going to uh, adapt and adapt and chameleon over to the gods of the world, the idols of the world, the things that people put in positions and places that belong to God, that set them on pedestals, these idols in our life that, that belong, that uh, those positions and places in, in our life, in the lives of those that live in the world that belong to God. Are you going to worship those gods? And, and this is what Joshua is saying. I love it. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Isn't that awesome? Uh, he's saying, as for me and my, me and my, we will serve the Lord. So it's personal. As for me and my, me and my, me and my, we will serve the Lord. You know, there's a difference between me and my and we. You know that, right? There's a big difference between me and my and us. Us. He's saying, I'm making a statement. Me, as for me. My house, we are going to serve the Lord. I mean, that's a straight line drawn in the sand. We're not going to worship the gods of the Amorites. We're serving the Lord, capital L. We have made a conscious choice and effort. As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Me and mine. And I want to talk to you a minute about this whole thing about me and my. I, 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 I. You know, we, sometimes we come to church, and I'm definitely not... I'm in a great mood this morning. Everything's well with my soul. I'm happy. I'm a happy, I'm a happy guy this morning. I feel happy. I feel joyful. I feel peaceful. In my, in, my, in my, This is not where you got to wear steel-toed shoes to church because your toes are going to get stepped on. It's none of that this morning. This is me and my house. We are going to serve the Lord. Right? We are going to serve the capital L, Lord. This is uh, Moses in Numbers chapter 11. And I want to talk to you about, and I said it a moment ago, that, hey, listen, this is not a one-man show, nor can it be. The days of one-man shows in Christendom are over. Right? This is us as a church. We. Of course, I'm your pastor. I believe that God gives me oversight. I believe that God will show me, give me direction for our church. I'm going to do my part. But the Bible says, and I mentioned it downstairs in Sunday school, I taught just for a few moments, that if on your row... Uh, somebody is rejoicing, what's the Bible say? Rejoice with those who rejoice. So if you're on the row and you're the only one sitting there like a bullfrog and everybody else is, is rejoicing, or even if there's one person rejoicing on your row, the Bible says rejoice with those who rejoice. As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. And in Numbers chapter 11, then I will come down and talk with you there. He's talking to Moses. The Bible says this relationship that God had with Moses was incredible. Because the Bible clearly says that, of my prophets I spoke to them through dreams and visions. But my servant Moses, my servant Moses, I spoke to him. I speak to him face to face. Isn't that awesome? To have that face to face intimacy with the Lord. And this is God speaking to Moses, I will take of the spirit that is upon you and I will put it 
Put the same upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with you, that you may not bear it yourself alone. The weight, we may look around, we have a, a small church. Yes, we do. It's not big by any stretch of the imagination. But it's healthy. It's healthy. Healthy, uh, I can prove it's healthy just by the last 21 days. I can prove it's healthy by the board that people took the time out of their own life, their own, watch, I found, oh, look, look, Scott showed me this. Look at that. <laughs> Pretty sweet, right? I got a laser pointer. But all the names on this board, all the names on this board, people took time out of their own day, their own life, and prayed and got before the Lord and, and, and took, and took a, a, a dry erase marker and wrote them on the board. That board is filled with people that need a touch from God. And we as a church believing in a healthy way that God is going to meet those needs. God is going to give us the desires of our heart, which in large part include the people on this board. Healthy, yes. Oh, we're not big, but healthy. I'm more concerned with a healthy church than I am a big church. Much more. And, and so uh, when we get to uh, plowing the field and we get to uh, casting vision going forward for our church that vision is not me Pastor Frank and she Sister Nola Jean taking the uh, full weight of all of that vision that is us as a church that's a healthy church us my job here at the church and it, it, it is to raise up people you and the ones on your row with you, for the work of the ministry. That's my job, to raise you up for the work of the ministry. And I said two weeks ago, that, or three weeks ago, that you are called of God into the ministry of reconciliation. Everyone in here can do their part. I'm going to tell on some of the people that were here Thursday night, Thursday morning. Is it okay if I tell on you? I'm telling you, you won't be mad at me, though. This is a good thing. <laughs> On Thursday morning, we talked, a lot about the, um, we talked about the woman who was caught in adultery. And that the, the Pharisees, the religious people of the day, caught her in the very act of, a, of, of adultery. And they drug her into the presence of Jesus Christ and said, What say you? And Jesus' response was incredible and miraculous to, to, to me. It was like he shut them right down. He said, he who has no sin, throw the first stone. In other words, drop the rocks, fellas. <laughs> drop the rocks. And then the Bible goes on to say from the oldest, from the eldest to the youngest. I don't know if you ever saw that before. From the eldest to the youngest, they drop their rocks. So it was almost like the young guys over here, like, okay, 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 what's daddy going to say? What's grandpa going to do? What's grandpa going to do? And grandpa, because he's wise and he's been at this a while, he knew that he had issues in his own life. He knew that there was some things going on in his life that he felt that he needed to drop the rock. And when he dropped the rock, everybody else followed suit. And I said this to Thursday to our ladies that were here. Some of you were here from day one when this church was birthed in a living room. What would happen if you got up in the middle of service and came up to the altar and worshiped God? Whew. For me, I don't know about you, but if that were to happen, not because of manipulation, because the Spirit's leading, I don't know about you, but me, if I was sitting there, I would get up and come to the altar. That's how much weight your presence has to it. That's how much spiritual clout you have. You, you tracking with me? As far as me and my house, we will serve the Lord. 
We, not me, my, me, my, me, my. And then, then here's Moses saying, okay, the job is too big. And I was saying to you that we're not a big church, a healthy church, yes, but we are growing. Our church is definitely growing. And as we grow, more opportunity for ministry and more things are going to need to be done here at the church. Nola Jean now will be here every day. I don't know if she actually said this or not. Maybe she alluded to it. Nola Jean, for, for now, Nola Jean will be here every single day from 9 till whenever, maybe 3 or 4 every day. The church is going to be open. And until the 1st of October, I will be here uh, three days a week. And then after that, I'll be here much more than that. Um, but in that will be more opportunity for you. For you, as we connect and get become uh, more connected and immersed in our society, our, our, you know, the city of Pembroke, the surrounding areas, and people know that we're here. Uh, mama groups will be started up, and different women's groups hopefully will get going. Uh, celebrate recovery soon, hopefully. Uh, we'll get up off the ground and running to offer help and hope for those that struggle with life-controlling issues. All out of this church, and one person, me or my wife with me, we can't do it. But I know it's your desire for the church to head in that kind of a direction. I know it is. I know it is. Because I've been with you for 21 days, listening to the cry of your heart. The reason why I wanted to pray with you for 21 days, because a family that prays together stays together. The best way to get to know somebody is to spend that quality time praying with them. In the presence of God. And so the same spirit that was on Moses was taken, not the Holy Spirit, but take the spirit, the capital S spirit, yes, spirit that is upon you and place it upon them. There were 70 of them there. Now watch this. What's the Bible say? And I told you this is just really a talk. It's not necessarily a, a sermon, but I'm talking about the power of us. The theme is us. The theme is we. The theme is together, unity, the commanded blessing, the commanded blessing. In this manner, therefore, pray, my Father, no, no, nobody wanted to speak up, okay, wait a minute, let me try it again, my Father, no, 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 our Father, right? Our Father, right? Not my. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Hallowed be your name. Not my. You know, the, the old song that we used to sing. Forget about yourself. Concentrate on Him and worship Him. So forget about yourself. Forget about myself. Me, my, me, my, my, me. And concentrate on Him and worship Him. So forget about yourself and concentrate on Him. Forget about me, my, my, I, I. You know, sometimes we come to church service and we go, hey, listen. <laughs> Man, I'm so glad Pastor Frank preached that message. She really needed that. Oh, man, pastor was hearing from the Lord. Did you hear how he got on him? Right? And worship him. Christ the Lord. Christ the Lord. Worship him. Christ the Lord. Not me. Not mine. Forget about this. Because sometimes, and I said that to say this, maybe, maybe you're just fine. Maybe you came to church and everything is good at home. And that's good. As rare as that is in the days that we live, praise God that there are times and moments and seasons that we go through where it's just like God is blessing us. There's no real issues to go. But, but listen, maybe it's, you need to enter in and forget about yourself for somebody else that's there today. To bring that corporate blessing, that worship that in, invites the presence 
of the Lord when we, when we dwell together in unity. How good and how pleasant it is when we dwell together in unity. For there, the last part, is for there the Lord commanded His blessing. Look at, look, we, we, again, we. Now Peter and John went up together in the temple, to the temple at the hour of prayer, at the ninth hour. They, he went, they went together. Peter and John went together. It wasn't Peter just going on his own. It wasn't John going on his own. Peter and John went up together to the temple. This is where the man that was crippled, the paralyzed man, was healed together. There's power. One puts a thousand to flight. The Bible says two puts ten thousand to flight. So on and so forth. A threefold cord is not easily broken. Together they went up to worship. And because they went up together, a man that was crippled was healed. Now, this particular scripture in Matthew 26 is where Jesus Christ is at the Last Supper. He's at the Last Supper and he's saying, uh, he says something staggering to these twelve. Do you remember what he said? Anybody? Remember what we said? Yeah, there it is, Dan. So they're having this intimate time. They're breaking bread together. They're together. One of you, one of you will betray me. And so if that were to be said here, or maybe, it, let me just say in, in church in general, not here, because the 80-20 rule and the 20-80 rule is flip-flopped here. It is. But in church in general, if, if God Christ would, were to say, hey, listen, one of you betray me. I mean, for the most part, we'd be looking around going, oh, yeah, it's him. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah, I know it. I know it's her. I can see it in her eye. It's definitely him. He's going to be the one that betrays. I who he's talking about. He ain't talking about me. But I know, I know that that brother, he just called him out. One of the most humble questions in all the word of God. Lord, is it I? Is it I? I mean, think about that. These men wrote the Bible, you guys. These men wrote the Bible. Humbly said, look, I know I'm in touch with the propensity to sin. Lord, Is it me? What a humble question that is, right? Instead of us going, yeah, yeah, I know it's, I know it's Teresa. I know Teresa. I know, I know it's Bethany. Mark, yep, yeah, it was Carol. Least likely, right? Is it, it's got to be. What, because it ain't me. But really, and in, in, in if we are to be Christ-like and we're to look at what this scripture is saying, that to really kind of humbly look at our own life and go, okay. He just said something deep, powerful. He just said something that radically moved my heart. Is he talking about me? And I think if we can get to ourselves to a place like that, it's so healthy. That's such a healthy place to conduct business as a Christian. Right? And then that puts you off the throne of your own heart. Right? Are you guys getting anything out of this? It takes you off the throne of your own heart. It puts God where He belongs, on the throne, in the center of every single thing that goes on in your life. It takes that low position of humility where God says, 
if you humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, anybody know the rest of what he says? He will lift you up. In due time, he will. He will lift you up. You go low, you come up. And I know in my mind, in my, in my life, that has an, is it I? You know, let me use this tool. Is it I? Hasn't always been the case. But if we can ever get to a place where humbly, like authentically, we are asking that question of ourselves. This message was powerful. This, uh, whatever what happened during the service, the word of the Lord, it, God, how are you speaking to me? How did this word directly, meaningfully affect me? Not them. And then even when we come to a place in God, look, look, look. Acts 2.1, famous portion of Scripture. Acts 2.1, talking about the day of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all, say all, all, all with one accord in one place. Amen. They were all, all of them. Now watch, this was before the promised Holy Spirit. Okay? So we say, well, they were all in one accord and the Holy Spirit came. Yes, but, but this, is, this is what the prerequisite was for the Holy Spirit coming on them. And you can read it. I don't have them up there, verse 2 and 3, but read it on your own. They were all filled with the Spirit, the Bible says, all of them, but all of them were in one place in one accord, all, A-L-L, not one or two, and this was before the promise came. This was before God poured out His Spirit on them. How much more? The Bible says, if we then being evil know how to give good gifts to our children, God called us evil. Now back to the Scripture. Is it I? Is it I? Jesus Christ said it. He said, if if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more would the Father in heaven give you the Holy Spirit? So of us, in one place, in one accord, in unity, all together, God commands His blessing. It's a commanded blessing. He doesn't have a choice where any two or three gather in my name. There I am in your midst. Amen. You. It's a commanded blessing when you dwell together. Not just dwell. Not just together. But in unity. And we're, and we're seeking for this, the same result. How much more will the Holy Spirit pour out upon us? The reason, the thought behind, not just to take an hour out of every night to stop what we were doing and come here, but the reason, the thought behind it all was this. One place, one accord, all. Because I know what the Bible says. The Bible clearly says that they were all filled with His Spirit. I do know that the Bible says that when they dwelt together in unity, that, that, that He commanded His blessing upon them. I want God's blessing on our lives. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise and, in, 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 and because... Be and the reason why I know that our church is healthy and getting healthier all the time is because of the turnout on those nights and everybody that was here was not praying for themselves. There wasn't one time when somebody came in and said, listen, listen this is, I've, I've just had quite a day. Even when you'd had quite a day, people were praying for other people. In one place, in one accord. Hallelujah. Watch this. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. Now, we hear um, 
stories and have heard preaching where Peter stood up in the crowd after having that experience there in one place, in one accord, and the Holy Spirit in verse 2 and 3 pouring himself out upon the 120 that were up there. Now, in verse 14, but Peter standing with the eleven raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. Preach the very first message, the message that birthed the church as we know it today. How many got saved that day? No scholars? 3,000. Plus. What a powerful message. No megaphone. He didn't have the lavalier microphone. He didn't have all the stuff, YouTube, all the stuff. And I'm grateful for YouTube. We're reaching people out of the YouTube ministry that we would not be able to reach otherwise. But Peter preached this message filled with the Holy Spirit, and God used Peter, this same Peter that said, that said uh, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus Christ said to him, Hey, look, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, but my Father in heaven uh, revealed that to you. On this revelation, on that knowledge, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen. But Peter didn't do it by himself. You see? You see, we overlook it. We overlook it. We overlook it. But Peter, yes, he delivered the message. Peter did. He was the mouthpiece. Standing up. We overlook it, church. We overlook it. I'll bet you've never seen that before, and if you have seen it, not too often. Do we ever talk about that? I really like this tool. Look at that. That's awesome. Scott showed me I had a laser pointer. But standing up with the 11, Peter was the mouthpiece. Yes, that was his role. But he didn't do it by himself. The power that was given to them in the upper room at the day of Pentecost was brought down to the streets of Jerusalem because, count them, 11 plus 1 as 12, because all 12 were together again in one place, in one accord, dwelling together in unity, and God commanded His blessing, and the church grew and grew and grew. Why? Because one man stole the show? No, because all 11 came with him. All 11 came with him. The power of us. Us, church. Us. Us. Each one of us. Yes, George, together. Each one of us has a role to play. Has a part to play in this. If we're going to go where I believe God wants to take us as a church, we have to do it together. Together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, there was only one Peter. He was the one that delivered the message. I get that. I'll give you that. I'll do my part. I will. I will do my part. The best that I can do it, I'll do my part. But be part of the 11. I really feel like that's what we have here. I really feel that that energy, the synergy, the, the unity that we have here as a church body, it's extraordinary. The gates of hell can't prevail against that. Watch this. This is a great story. And I'm about to wrap this up. I told you it really wasn't a sermon, although it kind of turned out to be one. Uh, Acts 19, 34, and then even before that, in the, in the late 20s into the 30s of Acts 19, you can read uh, where Paul came in. Let's read this verse, and I'll go back and tell you what uh, what I want to say. But when they found out that he was a Jew, all with one voice cried out for about two hours, great is Diana of the Ephesians. This is about Paul came in, and I believe the man's name was Demetrius. He was an idol maker. Paul came in. This man was making idols. People were spending money. They were getting sidetracked. There were, people were worshiping these idols. Paul came in. Uh, the, uh, the apostles came in and wiped him out and destroyed the idols. 
and shut the idol making business right down. The people were upset about that. Finding out that he was a Jew, oh, now watch, with one voice, look at, look. These are people that are worshiping devils. One voice cried out for about two hours Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Great is Diana of the Ephesians. The, the, Diana was a, a god of fertility. Or in other words, a sex god. And they began to cry out, not for two minutes, not for four minutes, not for a half hour, not for 30 minutes. Look at, look. They were so worked up for what they were about to lose. Look, they cried out for two hours. Great is Diana. Oh, if we could ever just get us to cry out for two minutes. Great is Jesus. Great is Jesus. He's the mighty God, the King of kings, the Alpha and Omega. Great is Jesus. Hallelujah. Clock is ticking. Great is Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Two minutes. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord Jesus Christ. There is none like you. There is none like you, Jesus. None like you. None like you. Do you believe it? Oh, I believe it. I believe it. I do. This is an important message this morning. I believe it. I, couldn't, I don't think that <clears throat> if I would have tried and tried and tried and tried and tried to think of a different way, a better way, let me say it that way, to wrap up our 21 days of prayer and some fasted, then talking about unity and God's commanded blessing, I don't know what that would have been. This is a fantastic message from the Lord to us. That this is not about one, me and my. This is about us as a church, as a family. Me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. We, together. Yep, amen. Amen. That's a real good place to give the Lord a hand clap. That's right. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to bring this one more scripture out. This is a uh, kind of a popular portion of scripture if you read through the Old Testament. And the Lord said, indeed, the people are, <clears throat> are one, and they are all have one language, and this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they purpose to do will be withheld from them. Now, let me, let me read this one more time. And the Lord said, this is God saying this, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language, and this is what they begin to do. Now, not now, why? Now, because they are with one language, all together, now nothing that they purpose to do will be withheld from them. These, this scripture is in regards to the Tower of Babel, where they were worshiping devils, all in one voice, all in one place, all in one language, and God, the Lord said, because they are operating that way, now nothing that they purpose to do will be withheld from them. Because they also in one voice, they also in one accord, they also in one language saying the same thing. Because God knew that if they kept it up and they kept acting like that and they kept living like that, nothing, no thing, nothing, Oh, I shut it off. What happened? Oh, let me put this down. I was doing so good. I got these big thumbs. Nothing that they intend to do will be withheld from them. Because, let me try one more time. If, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I don't know. Okay, amen. Nothing 
that they set out to do will be withheld from them because they are in one voice, in one accord, in one place. So what did God do? Anybody know what happened to the Tower of Babel? Yes. He had to break it up and he spread out the languages. He cleared it out. He divided it up because if they would have continued like that, they would become even more powerful, more powerful, more powerful, more powerful. How much more? If that's the way the enemy operates, how much more as a church, if we would just be in one voice, in one accord, saying the same things, not everybody puppeting what, what, what the pastor is saying, in your own personality, in your own way, but one clear vision, and we all are pressed into one common goal, which is to win the lost at all costs, to go ye therefore into the world, into Pembroke and Kingston and Duxbury and the outermost parts of the world and win people to Jesus Christ, how much more will God bless that? And I'm going to close with this. Matthew 18, 20. Would you play that music for me, please? Uh, I started this morning when I got up here saying, can I just tell you how, how much I love you all? I mean that. I really love you. This has been fantastic 21 days. I'm so encouraged. I mean, I don't know if you saw, we talked about last week. I've been purposeful in my messages uh, the last three weeks. They had purpose to them. They were pinpointed, and I thought as much as I could laser focus on what I thought the Lord wanted to speak. We talked about redigging the wells of Abraham, the Isaac generation. Redigging the wells that Abraham had dug that were formerly previously filled in by the Philistines after Abraham died. But Abraham would fight for those wells. That's why the Philistines didn't come fill them in when he was alive. They were important to him. And then a whole generation went by. And now here's Isaac. Hey, listen, I realize and know and I'm able to understand that we need to redig dad's wells. We need to redig the well of holiness. We need to redig the well of worship, the well of faith, so on and so forth. And we preached it last week. And when I got here last night, last Sunday night for church, for prayer service at 6 o'clock, and I said this during the message. I wished I would have had a shovel. I would have given it to each one of you as you came in the door. Somebody went out and got a shovel and stuck it in the ground outside the door to our church. Before Sunday night prayer. And that act of faith was me getting paid I don't know if that makes sense to you, but that blessed me, in other words. That blessed me more than you will know. That wow, we're ready to dig and redig those wells. We're with you, Pastor. That's what that said. We're with you, Pastor. We're alongside you, Pastor. We're in this thing together, Pastor. Amen. We're going to go forward, Pastor, together, Pastor, as a church. And some of the wells that were once open years before, years ago, we don't have to rename them. Let's just do it again. Let's redig them instead. We're with you, Pastor. For me, that was a huge blessing to me. So we, I'm going to leave. I'm leaving the shovel out there. In fact, I pushed it down a little deeper in the ground. It's a beautiful sign of, of faith. Faith, an act of faith. Now watch what the Bible says. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. <clears throat> Rarely does God give you an option. But he's giving you an option right here. He said, I prefer three. But if there are only two, 
I'll be in the midst of them. I want three. I want there to be three. But if I can't get three, if I can get two, if I can get two, to gather together in unity, in my name, there I will be in the midst of them. I mentioned this on, uh, I'm not sure if it was Wednesday night or Thursday. They all kind of blend together sometimes, but, or maybe it was during, I think it was during prayer night. It was one of the prayer nights. That God showed me the angel uh, in Mark chapter 5, or John chapter 5, excuse me, where the Bible says that there was a pool there, and as the water was stirred, whoever was first to get into that water received a healing. Remember the story? And there was a man there that laid there for 37 years, and no one picked him up. Nobody would pick him up to put him in the pool. Isn't that sad? They just, I mean, I'm going to go, me, my, me, my, my, me, 37 years. And then I talked about this, two different things in that story that I really like, that if, you, if just be, be that one that will stop and bend down and pick up your brother or sister and get them in the pool. By you rejoicing with somebody while they're rejoicing or weeping with somebody while they're weeping, that's what you're doing. You're the two. You're the one that comes alongside of that brother to get Jesus in the midst. Let me pick you up. Now you're not by yourself. Now there's two of us. Receive your healing in the name of Christ. And then there's also something to be said about that, that whoever was first in the water got healed, that I believe God is attracted to first responders. First responders. Those that don't wait for somebody else to do it, but somebody that will step out and say, okay, Well, I mean, we need to celebrate recovery group. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Or whatever it is. A prayer ministry. I'll do it. I want to do that. So the time is coming when that's about to happen for our church. Where a ministry opportunities coming. Thankful for this 21 days that we've spent praying together, forging plowing the field together. The best is yet to come. I believe that we'll see fruit that will last a lifetime and on into eternity. And this is not the last time. This is just the first time and the one time that we're going to set aside time and seasons to pray. But God, I thank you for these great people, Lord. They're fantastic, incredible lovers of God. I pray that you would bless each one of them. Those that could not be here today, God, for whatever the reason, I pray that you would reach out and touch their lives, God, and that we connect with them so that you would be in their midst today. The best is yet to come for us as a people and us as a church. Bless, God, the rest of our day. Watch over, Lord, as we get ready for tonight's celebration service, God, an experience night with you to worship. I pray, Lord, that today's, this day would be just filled with peace and blessing. Those that are sick in body, heal. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. There's power in us. Amen. amen and amen. You believe me? You believe that? There's power in us. Amen. Us. There's power there. There's power there. I'm grateful to be a small part of the big us. The big us. Be blessed. Go forward today uh, and just enjoy your family. Enjoy your day. The beautiful weather. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to eat tacos and watch football. <laughs>
<laughs> and I'll see you tonight at 5 o'clock. I love you. God bless you.